Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Yeah, yeah, it, is, it is at this moment that I need to kindly request if you can to please be standing. <laughs> Given that you the chance to stamp your things, clap your hands, wave your napkins in the air, four between the, the doors, right the way through to the top table, you've got to keep it going, for a full resounding ten, please show your love for getting ready for this day. Let's say we have suffered for the cause and leave it at that. <laughs> the Blossom Studio, Harriet, who has done all the flowers, they're absolutely beautiful. Olivia and Joanne at Capelli Her for doing all our hers. All three of these ladies are also horsey, so that's why we all get along so well. Thank you, ladies. Great job. To Lister's Butchers, Colette and David, who have employed and co-parented our Sam since she started as a Saturday girl 13 years ago. So, where it all began. Ian and Sam met via Facebook. Not as we did back in the day at a club or a disco. There was no sitting on the bus every morning making small talk and then suddenly being asked out or exchanging phone numbers and queuing at the local phone box with your 2p's and your 10p's so you could exchange a few daily words. They met briefly in Wigan and some time later Ian messaged Sam and said, Hi, are you okay? I hope you don't mind me messaging you. She was of course looking out at the time, Kit, the one who made his star appearance earlier on. They spoke for about three months and on the first date he got pied off. 
that means stood up, sorry I'm busy, blah blah blah. So on the Saturday, Ian was going out, so Sam got pied off. So eventually, on the bank holiday Monday, they, they went out for an Indian, and that's really where it all started. He also offered to take her out round Hindley and pick her up and taxi her with a friend. And I think it was more the red mini skirt that did it more than the normal. <laughs> So let me find out where I'm up to now. <laughs> so she said that it's great, Ian's away all week and I'm spoiled rotten when he comes home at the weekends. My first meeting with Ian, and we sat in our new house, and we hadn't moved in and we were waiting for carpets to be fitted, and I was feeding our Labrador's chicken nuggets. Ian thought it was, it was a very strange thing to be doing. I don't recall our conversation, but I do remember he looked about 12. <laughs> and he was a redhead. And completely opposite to what Sam's previous boyfriend had been like. So I'll just say thank God for that. <laughs> he fitted in right away, and the fact we share the same birthday, 36 years apart, was a bonus. As uh, Sam said, this is a good omen. Me, on the other hand, thought I now have to share my day and my present budget is hard. <laughs> so the motorway romance was two years in and Ian decided he wanted to leave the army. So after nine years with the Royal Tank Regiment, that's what he did. He came to live with us on the funny farm so he could be with Sam. And he got a job with United Utilities as a leak technician. So for the last four years, we have been like the Waltons. <laughs> Ian is a domestic goddess. You can take the boy out of the army, but you can't take the army out of the boy. From hoovering in straight lines, <laughs> and the way you hang your claws, one finger apart on wooden hangers, and oh my God, I'm going to tell you something. I was sat at the table, and he was like a dog with a bone because that cup was on the table, fest with. And it got to the point where I said, you don't leave cups on my table to leave a ring. There's going to be war. Like, trust me, there'll be war. And then after a while, I said, go on, you can have it now. And he would just go, Doo -doo -doo, and it was there in the dishwasher. And peace would come over him. That's what he was like. Oh, the engagement. December 2020, Christmas Day. Ian is all ready to go to his mum's. He had his black jeans on and his nice shirt and everything else. And this is what he did. I'm going to demonstrate. <laughs> <laughs> this. <laughs> so, I said, are you all right? He said, yeah, I'm going to do it. I went, do it? He went, yeah. I went, do what? I went, I'm doing it. I said, right, okay. He said, so you need to go and get Kit and you need to tell Sam that he isn't well. So, because Sam, it's Christmas Day as usual, on the couch, the biscuits, the tea, the Christmas movies, all that, and waiting for a dinner to be put in front of her. So I said, right, okay. So I go and get Kit out of the stable, I walk him round, I give him to Ian, who disappears with him to the front of the house. And I say, um, Sam, you're going to have to come and look at Kit. He isn't very well. So she goes, why, what's up with him? I said, I don't know. Ian's been for a wander down block and he said, he's not very well. He's lying down. So she went, oh, for God's sake. So she gets up and he said, where is she? Where is he? He's not on the yard. I said, oh, he might be at the front. He's not very horsey. Give him, you know. So he walked to the front door and there he was, on his one knee to practice. <laughs> with the ring and the horse. And obviously it was tears. And she said, yes. So this in 2021, the venue was booked and here we all are. <coughs> so, well, I could stand here all afternoon, but I've only been given five minutes. So I'm just going to finish by telling you a quick story and then my time is up. About 30 years ago, I got invited to a wedding. It's 30 years actually next week. And I made the effort and I turned up in the white dress and everything else. And it came to this part of the day, and there was speeches. And 
my father who gave me away, he, he made a speech and then it came to the groom's speech. And that is why I didn't open my speech by saying this sentence, because I didn't want to take the limelight off this poignant, this poignant <laughs> sentence, this riveting, almost magical few words that this man said on his big day. So, without further ado, I'm going to hand you over to Sam's father, the husband. You're going to say, <coughs> and you are going to say the best you can that sentence that you said 30 years ago. So give it some welly. Stand up. special day and making it the best day of our lives. Um, thanks bridesmaid Hannah and Kira. You both look absolutely beautiful. <laughs> and you Kira. I <laughs> uh, just want to thank everybody who's participated, you know, making stuff, turning out basically, and both sets of parents, mum and dad, John Reed. Thank you. Absolutely made up that you're here. <laughs> and, uh, finally, my Uncle Ken, the best man, he's been there all my life, guided me up through the army, maybe, realistically, the person who I am regimented today, um, and why he's uh, sat next to me, and that's it really, so I hope you all have a fantastic day, enjoy yourself, drink a lot, don't go to the bar too much for me, because it'll only sit on the side, unless it's water, um, yeah, enjoy yourself. Now, for a gentleman who, uh, when I, um, just before the wedding breakfast and after the ceremony, I normally go up to the speech makers saying, oh, right, what we're going to do, we're going to do this order X, Y, and Z, ask how long they're going to be at the time they're talking, we're going to use the microphone. Uh, the response from this uh, next person is said, we want a microphone, went, no, <laughs> don't need that. So, I will, uh, I will pass it on for the good man. However, please, a massive hand for your best man, Ken! The oldest best man in the history of weddings. <laughs> I was surprised when Ian asked me to be best man because, to be serious, you've only got to look at me once to think the fellow's nearer to the grave than he is to oh. the other end of it. But Ian Mays is the last of the mazes. And until he starts getting something out of it, he's going to continue. So let's hope there's going to be a continuation of that. I remember Ian, other than his mother, I've known him longer than anyone else in this room. So I remember him when he was, being, when he was born, I remember him going into Alder Hay, 
I remember all the cacophony when he was under the bed after having the injection and the screaming. And I was with him for most of his young life. His schooling, uh, his staying with his nan, with Charlotte of course, and walking round the park with the dogs we had then and teaching him how to march. And he eventually learned how to march and he joined the Army Cadet Force. So we piled him into a battlefield tour over to, um, over to France and he laid wreaths um, at the King's Memorial and one or two other places, fully dressed in his uniform. And later on, of course, off he went to the, what we used to call the Junior Leaders Regiment out at Harrogate, but by that time become the found Army Foundation College. Ian was a gunner, or his first regiment was the Hussars. But the Hussars have guns, and he was going to join the Hussars. But he then found out that the Hussars were in Afghanistan and were going to come back. So he wouldn't be able to go to Af Afghanistan. I thought, oh good, let's get him in the household cavalry. He can do three years in London, do public duties, miss all that, and he'll be as safe as houses. But no, what does he do? He leaves the Hussars, transfers to the World Tank Regiment, and ships out to Afghanistan. So there we have this hero here. Comes home, and eventually he meets her. <laughs> and they're motoring up and down, one of his friends is here, he used to show the, show the car. So they had five days down at the RTR depot, come home and then back down, and then five, di five days at the RTR depot, come back, come home. And then he brings this young lady to our house in Liverpool. Now, Liverpool is a place with a different accent that the most of you know, but there are one or two knocking about who I've heard say, all right, there, mate. But when Sam came over, Derek, my other half, couldn't understand a word she said. He actually said, she's as thick, he's as thick talking as Ryan is. Where's Ryan? <laughs> Absolutely down there. So we need an interpreter because Derek was used, although Derek had um, a reasonable civilised accent, he had no idea of how to speak bloody Lancashire. Now I was born in St. Helens, so I'm quite happy coming round to this Lancashire end of life, but I do live in Liverpool as well. But it was real fun in our house with Derek saying, Will you slow down, woman, so I can understand what you're talking about? <laughs> Eventually, here we are today, and she's so lucky, and he is even luckier. And if those of you who've been in the army will know what the relationship is between a commanding officer and a sergeant major, you'll know that it's the sergeant major that's in charge, yeah. not the commanding officer. Am I correct, ladies? Yes. yes. I'm so proud to be his uncle. I wish them both all the best, and I thank you for the way you've turned out today, the way you've been dressed, the way you've presented yourselves. Thank you very much indeed. God bless you too. Thank you. Charlotte 
I love to draw me kind of. said, ladies and gentlemen, there is only one thing remaining for me to say on behalf of all the team here at Merrydale Manor, Bon Appetit. Enjoy! Enjoy.